Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming by and uh, participating in this presentation. As you probably saw, I'm going to talk about complex catheters and try to give you some tips on how to go about making special products such as this. The outline that I've, I've prepared, I'm going to give you a real brief introduction to what Medical Murray does and then try to define a complex catheter for you with uh, three different examples of products that we're making, and then go into some uh, construction tips uh, related to braiding and molding hubs onto multi-lumen catheters, uh, silicone rubber balloon bonding to thermoplastics, and then some uh, words about integrating sensors into the catheter and, and how to go about it followed by a summary of what I've presented. So our company is in the Chicago area, and we started in April of 1996 between myself and my son Andy that was at Guidant. And we spent about the first 10 years on developing products, medical devices, primarily disposables, and then expanded into manufacturing in 2008 with a separate manufacturing facility that is located about four miles from our development facility. We just recently expanded our development operation into Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, late last year. So our focus has been on designing and developing devices uh, for other companies. We don't make any of our own products, we just make things for others. And we specialize in things that take unique processes things that nobody else knows how or wants to make, we take on as a challenge. And that involves special processes or materials or designs that meet those requirements. And this includes complex catheters that I'm talking about today, as well as components for them and implant materials. So what is a complex catheter? For us, it's a catheter that integrates a number of different features. And this is a table that I prepared that shows three different catheters, and it shows the features in them. Uh, we consider when something has six or seven different features in it, it becomes complex and difficult to make. And typically, they're multi-lumen, so that you have uh, one lumen maybe that's used for a guide wire, another one for balloon inflation or a sensor. Often, you need a low friction liner in one of those lumens to be able to easily move a guide wire through it. Uh, balloons often are needed to uh, make the function of the catheter work. Uh, variable stiffness, sometimes the distal ends you need very flexible to navigate the anatomy, but you want the proximal end to be stiff so that you have to combine different materials to achieve that. Uh, also, they often are reinforced with either braid wire or axial reinforcement to get special stiffness in the catheter for, again, positioning accuracy. and. These days, there's many that want sensors, such as temperature sensors or pressure sensors integrated into the catheter. We have a few cases where you want to deliver a sensor or a device, such as a stent, and you need a release mechanism built into the catheter so it lets go of that. And I'll show you an example of a release mechanism we've worked with on several cases. They also sometimes need to be steerable, so you put multiple pull wires into the wall so that you can tip the end of the catheter one way or the other and steer it into the anatomy. Soft tips, uh, radiopaque markers so you can see it under fluoro and know where the catheter is. Uh, side ports for delivering uh, drugs or other materials into the, to the anatomy. And usually if you have multi-lumens, you need to separate them out on the proximal end so that you get access to them individually. Uh, shape tips, uh, printing on the outside of the catheter to know the depth and where the catheter's positioned. Uh, hydrophilic coatings to make it slippery so that it moves easily. And finally, 
to make all these things happen, you have multiple materials, uh, different plastic materials, maybe nitinol wire, uh, Teflon, and so on. So to show some examples, this is an example of a catheter that we wanted to have a needle come out the side of the catheter to puncture at a different direction than what the main body of the catheter was coming through with the guide wire. And so to make this happen, we needed to be able to know which way this was coming out the side under fluoro. And so it had a uh, platinum iridium tube that was bent in it so it becomes like a pointer under fluoro. You can see the end of it under fluoro and tell which way it's pointed. And then there was a marker band embedded into the side of the catheter so you could see which direction it was pointed. And if you want to be able to have this control, you need a very torsionally stiff catheter. So we did a double braid over the outside and we incorporated a polyimide tube around the top surface here that is where the guide wire comes through. So it's a combination of these features that we considered making it pretty complex. Another application is a catheter that the customer wants to deliver steam. And this means that you have to have heat resistance in the catheter. Uh, it had a balloon on the end of it so that it needs to be a dual lumen to inflate that balloon. And you need a high pressure connector on the proximal end so the steam can be controlled at pressure. So in this case, we have a silicone rubber balloon bonded onto the distal end of the catheter, and it's braided to give it good strength and, and resistance to the internal pressure of the steam and a soft tip on the end of it. And the last uh, example I want to give is a drug delivery catheter. And on the bottom here, you can see the we have two balloons on the catheter, and these are inflated and a drug delivered between the two balloons. So it's a three lumen catheter, one for the guide wire going down it, one for the inflation of the balloons, and a third lumen to uh, infuse the drug out between, between these two balloons in this area. And then in the end, we had to separate the three lumens in the hub area into three separate lines to keep them all isolated. So first, I wanted to talk about making multi-lumen braided catheters. And here the problem is that you're putting braid wire over that multi-lumen and Typically, you put a PBAX or soft urethane over the braid and then heat shrink it down with a Teflon heat shrink tube. But if you don't reinforce those lumens, they all collapse when you do that process. So typically, you put small Teflon tubes with a wire inside of them so that after you've shrunk them, you can pull the wire out and then pull the Teflon tube out. In other cases, we put polyimide tubes into the inside of that lumen and it has enough stiffness and resistance and doesn't melt because it's high temperature polymer and so you can form a lumen just from that uh, polyimide tubing. And finally, uh, you can use shaped extrusions of PTFE for irregular shaped lumens, but usually the issue with that is how you get them out. It's really hard to pull them out after it's been shrunk down on them. Another uh, tip that can make a high axial stiffness and strength in a catheter is to do linear uh, reinforcements along the length. And this picture here, which is part of a, a braider, you can see these uh, stainless tubes sticking up. And what happens is you feed the axial fiber through those, and then the braider braids it into the weave as it's braiding. And it becomes very straight and very consistent along the length. 
and gives you both axial reinforcement and torsional. An example of this is down here in the bottom where we put in uh, four polyimide tubes that we braided with a thin polyester fiber. It held them in place and then we heat shrank the P-backs over the outside and left these four lumens in that were used to inflate four balloons at the tip end of that catheter. In some cases, they use Kevlar fibers for these, and it gives good axial stiffness and strength uh, during a per certain procedure. So now I wanted to talk about how do you separate these with uh, molding. The biggest problem with these is that you have a very thin wall between each of the lumens, and when you injection mold over it, it's difficult to have all three separated and not get any leakage across that very thin wall. And also you have to avoid any voids inside the molding because again that creates crosstalk between the lumens. <coughs> so one example to improve this is to start with bump tubing where the extruder makes it so that the, the proximal end is much larger in diameter thicker walls between each of the lumens to make it easier to mold. And then we place a softer strain relief material over the catheter so that when we put it in the mold we can shut off on that soft strain relief and get a consistent shut off. And next you put uh, wires with the individual lumens that I showed earlier into that and this becomes a preform, then it's put into the injection mold. Finally, you injection mold a polymer that will bond with the catheter, and you, you try to uh, make it so that all these wall thicknesses are very uniform, so it avoids shrinkage voids during the molding. And so it's about the design of the molded hub, as well as how you put the wires in and prevent uh, flow and prevent the voids coming out. So this is an example of a hub that we're molding now that have six lure fittings going into it and one fitting for a pressure sensor that goes down the side of it. And so it separates out six different lumens into individual uh, connections on the hub. Obviously, it's a lot easier to mold just a single lumen with a lure hub on the back for high pressure applications. We also uh, use molding to mold tips for catheters. Uh, these aren't really complex, but it's a way to create uh, integrated products. So next I wanted to mention uh, how to bond silicone rubber onto a thermoplastic elastomer catheter. And the most critical thing with this is to get a circular uh, bond line around it. If there's any variation or it's tipped or irregular, then the silicone rubber balloon won't open concentrically. It'll all open on one side of the catheter. And one of the ways we uh, avoid that problem is got to learn how to use this, is to put a, a little block that compresses the silicone rubber and prevents adhesive getting under it. And then you put the adhesive in both ends. It makes a very uniform bond. You cure it, and then you take the, the fixture off, and it leaves the balloon uh, unbonded in the right area. Also, adhesive selection-wise, we use uh, primers from Nucil to make a good bond between them, and typically a silicone rubber type adhesive. Of course, the alternate to this is a urethane balloon that you can heat bond, but you can't get as big a diameter out of it. With silicone, you can go up to maybe eight to 10 times its starting diameter when it's inflated. So then the next thing uh, I wanted to mention was integrating sensors into uh, catheters. And typically you need to bring wires back from the sensor to connect to them. And the problem is if you embed that 
copper wire into the catheter wall, it breaks the wire when you bend it into the body. And so one way to uh, avoid this is to put the wires inside of a polyimid tube again so that they can stretch and move inside. The other is to do a spiral wrap around the outside and then that prevents that axial lengthening of them during the, the, the bending of the catheter. And finally, I wanted to show you a, an example of a release device, a mechanism we've used in several products. And it uses a release wire that is threaded through a hole in the catheter that you want to deliver with, and then through the device, in this case, this Christmas tree-shaped part. <clears throat> and this, this wire holds everything together when you're moving it. But once you extract this wire out, out the back of it, it pulls out of those holes and releases the device completely. So it's a very simple way to hold something and then release it reliably. So in summary, uh, complex catheters mean that you have to use lots of different materials and many different processes. And I've shown you some ideas about braiding and hub design, how to bond silicone rubber balloons, a release mechanism, and sensor integration. So we'd be happy to help you out on uh, any challenges you might have. And you can see us at our booth at 1890.